If you're going to get up before 7 a.m. to watch a rugby game across the other side of the world, an eight-try game where the score is kind of blisteringly fast, especially in that first half, as you're still waking up, it's not a bad way to get it done, man. Bristol, whose team I still do not have a magnet or a jersey for, I'll sort that out eventually, uh, 33 points to 24, mostly in the first half. You look at the times of the tries, 5-9, 16-28, Absolutely out of the blocks, like lightning. Uh, you'd have to say Gloucester, man, did they have their chances. So many half chances, I'm not sure that they converted any of them. The proper half chances. They come away from this game with um, with nothing. For Bristol, it's a big bonus point win, away from home. So they will certainly be uh, pretty pleased with that one, although I guess Pat Lamb will still look at some things and um, you know have some areas of concerns. Likewise... Gloucester will be able to see kind of where they let themselves down. But um, overall, man, pretty entertaining game. Second week back, eight tries. Crazy stuff. Um, both sides, I think, defensively were pretty fired up early. Gloucester essentially won a penalty from, from Bristol's first attack, and then Bristol did the same back to Gloucester when, uh, when Gloucester had the ball. They traded penalties, but it wasn't long. Until um, until the first try. Max Mellon's got it uh, on five minutes. Run Rondo with the try assist because, I mean, there'd been a, there'd been a kick through prior to it. And, um, yeah, they're just the hands of, of the Bristol guys. It was just phenomenal stuff. And some of the guys, as I was live streaming the game, people were comparing Bristol to, like, a super rugby team. Either way, it's still a premiership team, and it's a it's a skills team because they needed some proper hands uh, in the build up to that one. Um, Johnny May, to be fair, went close after the restart. This is what I mean by those half chances. Uh, he was kind of chasing down a kick through, but it was just slightly too big. The TMO checked it to see if it was going to be a twenty-two dropout or if it was like a scrum or whatever. But either way, it wasn't going to be a try. But he was still pretty close. Uh, there's another try. On nine minutes, it's Purdy this time, and it's another try assist for Semi Randrandra. Uh, he put down some some proper gas for a line break. I thought he'd held on to the ball too long. I thought he should have passed earlier. I thought, oh, he's blown it. But that's the thing about that guy. He gets the ball in a position where you think either he can't do anything or he's made a mistake. But no, he hasn't made a mistake. That was my mistake for doubting him. Uh, he pops the ball up. Uh, to Purdy with a last minute offload and sure enough he goes over for uh, for the try so things are looking pretty good for for uh, Bristol at that point then like they keep the they're scoring more than a point a minute Harry Thacker goes over this one wasn't like out and out backs with slick hands and offloads this was like a five meter line out mall drive Semi Randrandra is in there though. He's pushing Thacker over, and you see him celebrate like he scored it himself. Uh, but yeah, so it's three tries. It's like nineteen nil after sixteen, seventeen minutes to Bristol, and it's looking it's looking pretty horrific for Gloucester at that point. Uh, however, they did strike back through Fraser Belmain uh, through a try of their own. <clears throat> that one was um, it was with advantage. They. Um, they did check for like a double movement, but uh, it seemed like he kind of got it down. Just the ref was in a good position. And one angle looked short, the other angle looked like he was all good. So he dropped over the line, at least got Gloucester on the board. Um, then the man himself, he, he probably needed a try of his own because he'd been setting up half the other ones. Rand Rader gets a try, the TMO, TMO checked it. If he'd had a double movement, but also they ruled that he hadn't been held in a tackle. And it's another one they looked like he's in a position where he can't score. It looks like he's he's going to be covered, but he just manages to bust the tackle and go over and put the ball down. Um, so yeah, he was just wreaking all kinds of havoc in that first half. Uh, so yeah, big period of pressure from, from Bristol and, and they converted it. Uh, they did get a try though, Gloucester, before half time. Harris went over. 12 trees, I think, had the pass. So it was good for them to hit back pretty much straight away, like two minutes after the, the Bristol try. And 
Right before half time, Gloucester had a chance to to really kind of put themselves back in the game. They had three opportunities from penalties to set up like a five meter line out. I mean, one was like six meters or seven, but either way, the first one I think the line out <clears throat> they didn't pass it. They I think they was it like turned over at the line out, like um, like Bristol won the line out. The second one they won the line out, but then. Their set play, the initial pass, was taken by a Bristol guy. And then the third one, I forget how they stuffed it up. But yeah, they essentially messed it up three times. Maybe they should have just taken the three. But with the scoreline the way it was, maybe they were thinking they needed to score to get back into the game. But either way, it was very much three missed opportunities for Gloucester. So they go into it halftime. Gloucester have had 35% possession, 37% territory. They've had 67 run meters to Bristol's 201. Uh, penalties conceded is pretty high, 13 by Bristol, 9 by Gloucester in that first half. So the ref was a, a pretty busy chap. But um, yeah, they'd had to make 84 tackles, Gloucester to Bristol's 39. So they were definitely under the pump in that first half. Not that they weren't without their own chances, like I said, but yeah, Bristol just... Yeah, first half out of the blocks, too good. Second half starts, Gloucester do decide to take a three when they win a penalty, so it's 26-17. And then uh, Ben Earl gets a try for Bristol on 50 minutes after um, Simpson, to be fair, had given away a pretty stupid penalty. Like, Bristol had been on the attack. They put, uh, I think it was Vui into touch. So it would have been a, a Gloucester line-out, but then Simpson comes in slightly after the play to kind of put his shoulder into someone, and the ref says it's a penalty, and it's from that resulting play that Bristol score. So again, it's just kind of... If I was a Gloucester fan, I'd be pretty frustrated with that kind of stuff. So 33 points to 17. That's the last of the scoring for Bristol, so they're not going to score for the remaining half an hour of the game. Uh, Gloucester go close. Bristol's defense holds a few times. Um, Reece Samet goes close on a kick and chase this is a, kind of another half chance uh, Cipriani puts the ball out on the full so it looks like it's all going to go wrong but they did get one more try uh, through Vani, I think it was Chris Harris with the with the setup play for that one good break, good support line but that's the kind of final scoring play, so yeah, Gloucester man, <clears throat> not without their chances albeit some of them half chances and sometimes those ones just don't go your way Bristol, I think, like, for as good as they looked in that first period, will still be a bit disappointed they couldn't hold more pressure on for that, that second half. Like, they scored one try, and it was not quite a gift. They still had to do the do the play, but it was a silly penalty from Gloucester to set it up. So, man, if Bristol had played at the same intensity for full 80, <clears throat> that could have got properly messy, but... Either way, it's still a very good win. They'll take it all the way to the bank. So, yeah. <clears throat> Ronda Ronda in the first half was just next level. Second half, he didn't really have any ball. Um, final stats, and this is what I mean about both teams having things to work on. Run meters, 313 to 262 in Bristol's favor, but you'd say Gloucester had the better of that second half. Position and territory ends up being still in Bristol's favor, 55-45 for position, 53-47 for territory. But second half was definitely more Gloucester because the first half stats were quite dominant for Bristol. Um, neither side's lineup was fantastic, 82% for Gloucester, 76% for Bristol. Both would like to improve that. Uh, tackling percentages, both 88, pretty solid. Both teams made similar amounts of tackles. But I think for, for Gloucester... Nine knock-ons to Bristol's two. That is a big area of concern. So total turnovers conceded, if you include like turnovers as well, 17 by Gloucester, three by Bristol. Horrendous. In some ways, the masters of their own downfall there. But for Bristol, man, 21 penalties conceded in one game of rugby is pretty, pretty bloody high. Gloucester were at 13, which is still... Not a small number, but man, 21. Very concerning for Pat Lamb. So, yeah. Both sides were stuff to work on, but I'm not complaining. It was a hell of a game. First half especially was absolutely electric. As I said, more than a point a minute at times. Uh, second half was kind of characterized by a bit more like defense, like Nathan Hughes with a huge tackle uh, at one point. That kind of stuff was all um, all pretty, pretty fun to watch. 
And um, yeah, it's a good start to my day on a Saturday morning here in New Zealand. Uh, Ran Rader, like I mentioned, had 130 run meters. Remember, his team had 313. He's got 130. When he is on form, he is on form. Uh, Paul Edry for Gloucester had 16 out of 17 tackles, so uh, putting in a good shift, maybe more defensively than offensively this week, but still. Yeah. All right, well, I'm going to go about my day. As I said, it was a pretty good way to start the day. Uh, it is nice to be watching the Premiership for a change. I probably wouldn't normally be watching it, uh, at least for the channel. I'd be catching the odd game, but it's nice to sit down and um, pay some, some close attention to it because it's been pretty fun stuff thus far. Anyway, you guys let me know your thoughts on the game. What did you think about Gloucester's effort? Uh, how did you think Bristol, Bristol went, especially that second half? What do you think they could be doing better? And um, yeah, I'll talk to you guys again soon. See you later.